this is your Tita in China and today we're back with a new skincare video. So today we're going to talk about collagen. This is super duper popular in the Philippines and we see it in all forms. But I think the most popular ones are the ones that you take orally whether in powder or pill form. And we're going to also talk about some collagen skincare products and see whether or not collagen is actually something that you would want in your skincare routine or is it better orally taken. But before we move on, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Emmeline and I am your tita in China. I upload skincare related videos as well as China related videos. So if that's something that's interesting to you, please hit the subscribe button and the bell that you will know the next time I will upload a new video. And also please follow me on Instagram, your tita in China, because I also upload product reviews as well as interactive skincare questions with all of my followers. So if you have any burning questions that you'd like to ask me, or if you want to see more product reviews, I will have a lot of those there. So check me out. So without further ado, let's talk about collagen. Collagen is not just super popular in the Philippines but in the whole of Asia as well and it is a well-known anti-aging supplement or an anti-aging ingredient. In Korea, pig trotters are eaten as a beauty food because of the high level of collagen found in the skin and soft tissues of any animal. And in China, whenever I see tendon or cartilage on the menu, someone on the table, whether it's my Chinese friends or co-workers, will always mention that we should eat it, especially young women, so that we will stay healthy and stay young looking. So adding collagen in our diet to increase the levels of collagen on our skin is actually not a very new concept and it has been practiced for many many years, for centuries probably, all over Asia. But does it really work? And if it does work, how does it work? Collagen is a protein that is naturally present in our skin and the skin of all animals. It, along with other components like elastin, ceramides, cholesterol, hyaluronic acid, maintains the structural integrity of the skin. So the younger we are, the more collagen we have. And as we age, the collagen that we have on our skin gets depleted because of UV rays, stress, pollution, and again, just like with ceramides and peptides, also destructive behaviors like smoking, um, too much drinking of alcohol, and just basic stress can actually deplete the amount of collagen that we have in our skin. These factors either eat up the existing collagen in our skin, or like in the case of smoking, actually hinders the body in producing more collagen. So first, let's talk about about collagen in topical form, you know, skincare products that you apply directly on your skin. The problem with collagen is the same problem with peptides. They are big molecules and they don't actually go to the dermis layer where they are supposed to work. So staying in the top layer of the skin does not actually give the same collagen building effect as if it would actually go into the dermis. But collagen that is applied on the skin actually can act like a very good humectant and that in itself is already very beneficial. Just like with peptides, again, Again, with more hydration on the surface level of your skin, the wrinkles on your skin actually become visibly less pronounced and your skin also has that fresh glowing look. But then again, you can achieve this look without collagen, without peptides, just a basic old moisturizer will actually work the same way. The difference between peptides and collagen, for example, and the retinoids, which actually stimulates the body to produce more collagen, is that when you remove collagen from your skincare routine, then the wrinkles will show up again because it's really just like a masking effect, a temporary hydrating effect that the collagen or the peptide cream has on the skin. While retinoids for example actually fill in your skin from inside out which creates which actually reverses the signs of aging and also of sun damage so when marketers claim that collagen is anti-aging you can't really say that they're wrong because at the end of the day when you apply collagen on your skin it does reduce or mask the look of the fine lines and wrinkles that you have so it does have an anti-aging effect it's just not the kind of more perfect permanent anti-aging effect that we like to see or we can achieve with other ingredients like retinoids. The term anti-aging is not actually a medical term, it's more a marketing term. So brands and marketers actually have a lot of leeway when it comes to using that term. But if you ask me personally, the only way you can claim that it is anti-aging is if it actually turns back time 
time. You know, and no product can do that. No one can turn back time. Another definition of anti-aging for me is when there's actual stimulation of collagen inside the skin, within the skin, which makes the texture of the skin more supple and more hydrated. And that is something that you can only achieve with retinoids. But then again, not all people have the same standards as I do. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are just happy seeing that their skin looks hydrated, looks younger, and that their fine lines and wrinkles looks less prominent. So again, it really depends on the kind of aesthetic that you're looking for and the kind of effect that you're expecting from the products that you buy. So the main problem with collagen is the size of the molecule. It really just stays on the surface of the skin where it is a good humectant and that's pretty much it. So if the problem of collagen is the size, how about we make collagen smaller so that they will be able to actually penetrate the surface of the skin? And that is exactly what hydrolyzed collagen is about. So hydrolyzed collagen are just chunks of collagen of different sizes that were taken from a bigger collagen molecule. Now theoretically, logically speaking, right? Now that you have made the collagen molecule smaller into hydrolyzed collagen, it should be able to penetrate the skin more, right? Well, the answer is when applied topically, hydrolyzed collagen doesn't actually do anything on the surface of the skin. It's still too big to penetrate and will just stay on the surface. So again, hydrolyzed collagen in moisturizers makes the moisturizer good, but it doesn't actually go deep enough into your skin to produce or to stimulate the growth of more collagen on your skin. So it seems like there's not much difference between a basic moisturizer and a collagen moisturizer, but how about collagen supplements? Will there be any difference if you take collagen orally? The studies on oral collagen supplements are not actually that many and usually if they are tested on human beings then the sample size, the respondent size is very small and a lot of them also are just tested on mice for example. But definitely compared to topical collagen, oral supplements for collagen do have more studies backing them up. I'm not saying that they're the best studies or that I'm personally convinced enough to take collagen supplements but you know if you need to bet on just one the best bet seems to be on oral collagen supplements and that's simply because there's more studies that actually give you more data about the effectivity of oral collagen supplements so in the studies made on human beings for oral collagen supplements all of them reported an increase in hydration levels but the actual increase of collagen in their skin was only 10% and below again it depends on you if you're going to have a 10% improvement in the amount of collagen in your skin will you be happy spending the amount of money that you're going to spend on the supplements that's up to you also important to note that most of these studies that were done used um, collagen hydrolysate collagen tripeptides and collagen dipeptide so these three types of collagen are the most extensively studied among all of the different types of collagen now it doesn't matter if it's frozen collagen if it's fish collagen but what's more important is the type of collagen and what you should be looking for is collagen hydrolysate, collagen tripeptide, or collagen dipeptide because these are the most studied types of collagen in oral supplements. It is also important to note, by the way, that porcine, which is pork collagen, and bovine, which is beef collagen, actually has better results in studies compared to fish collagen. So those are just little things that you might want to take note of if you are interested in taking an oral collagen supplement. So the size of the chunks is what makes a difference between these three types of collagen. But other than that, it's just the same thing. They're all just collagen and you're going to get the exact same results when you're going to use either one. But of course, if you are concerned about the levels of collagen in your skin, taking oral supplements shouldn't really be the first line of attack for you. It really really should be more on making sure that you are not depleting or you are slowing down the depletion of collagen on your skin. And how do you do that? Number one, you need to protect it against the sun. So regular and religious application of sunscreen is much more important and has much more effect on the amount of collagen that you have on your skin than any supplement. Also behaviors like the intake of too much sugary or refined food, smoking, excessive alcohol drinking, all of these behaviors, once you stop them, can really improve the collagen levels of your skin. Instead of 
going and taking a pill, you should look inwards and see what behaviors you can change so that you can have an overall healthy body. And as you know, a healthy body also means healthy skin. So that's our video for today, guys. I hope that you found this informative and I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and share this to your friends who are also skincare buffs. Or if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comments down below and I will get to you. Or you can also follow me on my Instagram where I share a lot of content that I don't get to do here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye. Shout out to Jen.